You've made the decision. You're going to start working out. You're going to the gym. So let's see. Are you ready? You've got your towel. You've got your water. That's not quite it. Grab a pen and paper, let's have a seat, and let's tell you what you need to go to the gym. You've made the commitment, you're ready to go to the gym, this is it. I want to get you ready so that your first trip to the gym is going to be successful. A lot of people go to the gym and if you're not prepared, you're not going to be successful or feel good, therefore you're probably not gonna go back. In this video, I'm gonna share with you five tips. If you will follow every single one of these, you should have a good gym experience driving you back for more. So the first thing you need is adequate sleep. You must have good sleep to make any gains in the gym, whether you're gaining muscle or whether you're losing weight. There have been numerous studies, but specifically a study where they took athletes and they took athletes and they had them undergo mental and emotional tests with adequate sleep. And then they ran those same athletes back through the same studies with no sleep. And what this found is all of the athletes fatigued. They reported a feeling that it took a lot more energy to do the same exact exercises and they wanted to give up. It forces the brain to want to give up when you have to exert so much energy for something just to get a small amount done. So adequate sleep. Everyone has a different number, but you wanna make sure you get good night's sleep or you take a nap and you work out after that nap. Sleep is crucial. Number two, comfortable clothing. And this is so important for lots of reasons. You have to make sure that when you go to the gym that you've got, rather it's gonna be shorts or yoga pants or whatever you wear that is comfortable. And when I say comfortable, I don't just mean loose. Do you feel comfortable in the clothing or you're not going to exercise and do the activities that would probably benefit your mind and body the most? I see a lot uh, people start to do exercises in the gym and they realize that their shorts do not have enough covering or they don't have the second layer beneath and they're not able to perform that exercise. Or they start to maybe do jumping jacks and the shirt is too sh short um, and their belly is hanging out. So you wanna make sure that you've got comfortable clothing so that you're gonna feel secure walking into the gym to get that workout done. Number three, you want to have a plan. Even if you have no experience in working out, even if you don't know how to use the machines or the weights, you want to get a plan. There are all kind of apps. I use an app myself that has videos for each and every exercise. There are printout workouts online. Um, a lot of them are free, a lot of them are paid. You can take your choice, but it's better to have a plan. If you walk in the gym without a plan, instead of just making the workouts on a whim, and I'm telling you this from personal experience, you are more likely to give up and not work out as hard. If you walk in there and say you're gonna take leg extensions and you know that, you're gonna go there and you're gonna have a plan and you know what you're going to do next and the following. If you don't have that plan a workout, something in your hand or an app or a piece of paper, your mind is going to trick you as to what's open and what's not. And you're going to find yourself making decisions that probably are not in your best interest for making physical gains. The next one I would encourage you is so much. I know a lot of people do not take supplements and there's 
lots and pros to cons to almost everything but i feel this is very crucial if you're going to go to the gym you're going to go to the gym to make gains rather gain muscle or lose fat and there is nothing but a downer then if you get to the gym and you don't have energy once you start to get through that workout. So I would encourage BCAAs, branch chain amino acids. These are essential. That means your body cannot produce these amino acids. Working out without consumption of a BCAA, when your body starts to pull energy from reserves if you do not have enough essential amino acids in your body it will pull from your own body therefore you will not be making gains if your body's borrowing from itself to start with bcaas i can tell you are a huge difference if you don't believe it Try a workout with BCAAs and try the same workout without BCAAs. The best way to take a BCAA, you can buy them in pills. I prefer to drink them throughout my workout, but some people drink them immediately before or you can sip them throughout your workout. BCAAs have shown in studies to increase your muscle mass have shown to improve recovery and definitely decrease muscle soreness. Endurance and soreness are huge to me. Before I started BCAAs, I could barely walk some days after a leg workout. When I added BCAAs, the same exact workout, I was able to go through, not struggle, and not have that post-workout soreness muscle damage. BCAAs are huge. So I would encourage you to get some of those, keep them in your gym bag, um, and decide which way you're gonna do it, but have those ready. And the fifth thing I believe is super important, and I don't see a lot of this at the gym, is bringing back up energy. You're going to the gym to expend energy. When you exercise, you are using energy. And whether you're losing weight or whether you're trying to gain muscle. And I think it's very, very crucial to go to the gym with backup energy. Sometimes you need it and sometimes you don't. Whey is a wonderful protein supplement that you can pack and you can take with you. Some gyms sell them, but I know I've been at gyms where I bought in whey and it was spoiled. So having your own source would be a wonderful thing. So either keeping whey with you or keeping an apple in your bag. I can't tell you how many times I've made it to the gym and in a workout, you have an extreme bout of rather you have lightheadedness or your sugar drop because your body's not used of using that much energy in the beginning at first anyway and you get to the gym even if you ate before and you're 30 minutes into a workout and you're seeing stars the last thing you want to do is go home when you've been having a killer workout You've started to make your commitment and now you're not feeling well. And all it takes is one bad trip to the gym that you do not want to go back. And especially if it's your first one. If you got that backup source, I can tell you from experience, I literally will just take a seat, have either I make my own protein bars, I will have my protein bars or my whey or my apple have that and within two or three minutes i'm back on my feet feeling good and cranking it but had i not had that extra source of energy the workout would have been over and it would have been time to go home the protein bars that you see that a lot of gym sell they are not really great for in workouts i will tell you if you have a sugar crash i've i've had rebound blood sugar issues with those bars so be careful with that. They, they work outside of the gym and sometimes before the gym, but in the middle of a routine where you're actually lifting weight and expending energy, 
you really need something fast, glycogen or something that the cells are gonna take up readily and a whey shake or an apple or some type of homemade protein bars like I make work. I carry them in a Ziploc and I carry, and I don't eat them all the time. But if I made it through the workout without it, that's great. If I didn't, I got it. So guys, don't forget, those are the five tips. Get ready, hit the gym, and I'll see you back. Don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe below, and I'll see you back in the next video.